But what I, I remember when I walked in the H Rock and uh, he saw me, he said, Mina, you have to see yourself greater than life. <laughs> you are a giant mm -hmm. in the spirit. I was like, uh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I want to encourage you. Prophet speak God's heart. That is God's heart for you. You may not see yourself, but I took for serious, so I wrote it down. So a lot of prophecies that Pastor Mark Lee gave me, I wrote it down. I say, well, God, uh, it sounds a little bit far out, but I agree with you. What is it you want me to do? You know, I work with you. So I said, today, if I want to share anything, is work with God. So the second lesson is, what is it I work with, with God? I was seeing around the room, you know, everybody has great potential because God's heart for you is great. He has a great, for, great plan for your life. Mm -hmm. The only difference is how much would you give up yourself? Wow. How much would you give up your own stinky thinking? <laughs> what is the stinky thinking that previously Pastor Mark and Andrew said? I mean, yes, we, we went through junk in our lives, but it was in the past. Every day take out the trash. So every night I try to take out the trash. What do you do? I forgive. And I let go. Let go of the people that hurt you. I will name the name. So and so I forgive you. And I let you I let you go out of my soul. So I don't accumulate garbage. Because if I have too much garbage, I cannot run. Because I will allow those accusations continue to play in my mind. One, two, ask for forgiveness from God because I probably offended people that day many times over. <laughs> so I need to ask for forgiveness. So every day morning I can be renewed. And Pastor Andy talked about in the morning, you know, before we hit the floor. Yes, I pray and I say I take power over all powers of darkness. I take authority of the of the Lord that gave me. I'm a priest. I'm the king. I'm not only the child. Now I take on my priestlyhood. So that way you run before I even get out the door. So that is every day, every day, every day. So slowly. God give you the connection. So uh, make a long story short. Every time uh, I have something big, actually started out, you know, taking a, um, when ISIS came and there were Christians being persecuted, we need to, and the President Obama wouldn't do anything. So I had to go, I was asked to go to Congressman for help because I didn't know any. So I went to Pastor uh, Mark Lee for prayer and uh, he, he gave me words that was like, uh, you have to know I'm a dual citizen. I'm just a dual citizen like you. I don't have any position. You know, I'm married and, uh, you know, we, we have a law office. And uh, yes, I do serve the Lord since I was 14. I have a lot of practice, but still I'm a dual citizen. And uh, so Pastor Mark Lee said, you know, I see you, for example, uh, you bring a delegate of people, go to Israel to meet the government there and you increase the relationship of America and Israel. What would you think when you're a Jew citizen? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he cannot fathom. But at least I was innocent enough to say, okay, well, God, I know it sounds a little far fetched, but I work with you. So slowly, step by step, he gave me a lot of training and people and going through the Trump election and hooked me up with the right, right team. He can hook you up with the right team, just like that. Mm -hmm. Out of thousands of thousands of thousands of teams, he can appoint mm -hmm. you to the right team. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did for me. I hooked up, no, I got allowed me to hook up with the right team. Suddenly I'm in the company of different class of people. What, they are the national leaders of movements. I was like, how blessed I am, you know? And I did ask, God the same question when I was 10, uh, 55. Lord, what do you want me to do when I grow up? <laughs> I was only 25, I mean 55. What does he want me to do when I grow up? Yes, I serve in the church. I do the face painting, I did a cake, I moved the chairs. Yes, I did all this. You know, I did ushering, everything. But you know, it's not like uh, something big. You know, so what does he want me to do when I grow up? Mm -hmm. So move forward, I'm 65. And uh, the stories that I can share with you, you can go on our website. It's just every day, I'm, I think even the ex, 
the apostles, what do you do? God give me even more. You know, I was in the White House. I was invited to the president's office in Israel. Went to Egypt, saw God's hands working, and the, the Lord brought just just world class people. Co op out of blue, and you know, in a couple of months, we're going to go to Erbil, which is Kurdistan, to meet with people who join our team, whom the government of Kurdistan, Kurdistan get them like one billion US dollars, one billion, wow. to build a hospital for Christians mm -hmm. in a Muslim country. And we'll join a lot of, uh, the Lord gave us uh, resources to join the medical missions teams mm -hmm. from big, big Christian hospitals. In other words, if I were to list this, way too many to list. But the point is, and that is, remember the two things if you don't remember what I shared today, and that is God speaks through prophets, and that is his heart. Take it for serious. Don't think, oh, la, 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 it's just too far-fetched, and then you forget about it. Write it down. So I have uh, a file, visions, prophecies in my computer. Every other move, you go over, go back to see, okay, Lord, you know, this has happened. And this has not happened. Okay, I'm going to pray, Lord. I work with you. What is it? I mean, I'm willing to give up. Would you willing to give up a lot of TV watching? And I heard people, you know, uh, I say, let's go do this and this. And that person will say, oh, can't. You know, I had to ride horses. Fine, go ride horses. But you don't have to <laughs> spend a whole weekend to fight, ride horses. <laughs> All fine, okay, but I had to, uh, I have a boat I just bought, you know, I had to take a boat out. <sighs> fine, go ride the boat. Four hours, fine. How about the rest of one and a half days? What can you do? You know, so in other words, what would you be willing to give up? Your life, your thoughts? The discipline, I think it's the hardest for me is the self-discipline. Mm -hmm. And that is, as an older person, it's easy for me to think, what can you tell me anyway? I'm old. I've been a Christian for 50 years. I've been through this meeting 10,000 times. What can you teach me? Hmm. That's the hardest thing. When you read Bible, you say, you went through this 10,000 times. What can I learn that's new? Therefore, renew all my self. So God, I have to be like a child. Come to you as a child, what is it? What is I'm seeing? What am I looking at? And uh, when I went to Israel this time, the guide, even the tour guide, taught me so much. And so, so many questions that I grew up as a Lutheran, I had no answer. But I understood so many things. So it's a challenge for older Christians. Can you believe that at this age, 65, your life can be even happier, more fun, more exciting, new adventure? Things you have not seen, eyes have not seen, earth, your ears have not heard. When I went to Egypt, I gave up on Middle East a long time ago, especially 9-11. Uh, I gave up because I'm thinking, oh, those Muslims, you know, we tried. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for rapture, Lord rapture me, you know. <laughs> but no, when I went to Egypt, within two days, the Lord changed my mind. God loves everybody. God loves the Muslims. God has prepared the Christians they have not bowed to Baal. Yeah. Those people are preparing the altar. You talk about this, a worship and battle, battleground in the spirit to mm -hmm. prepare a worship and to pay, prepare Cairo throughout Egypt. The, po the, the revival center throughout the Middle East to Assyria, back to Jerusalem. People in the ship nation there. Mm -hmm. And God is summoning all the people around the world simultaneously. In other words, what's taking place here is taking place elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. And that is the sign of the last days. God is going to come, come back to a bride so without blemish. So while preparing ourselves to be that bride, that, but first thing is that I, I feel. You got to believe it. I don't care how old you are, as old as I am, that the life can be fun and yeah. exciting. Yes. And new, and new things. 
but are you willing to give up yourself? How much of you are willing to give up? Mm-hmm. Your own stinky thinking and uh, your old, old, old traditional thing, you know? <laughs> and that is the last day of Revelation. Revelation will be new. The plans are new. All things are new, just like a creation mm-hmm. is always new. God is a creative God. Yeah. Yes. He continues to create new things and the kingdom does not cease. The kingdom does not stop. Mm-hmm. And that's the, when we pray, we say, God, your kingdom come, your will mm-hmm. be done on earth in my life today. Mm-hmm. That kingdom can come today. Now I realize, yes, I didn't think it was possible. I was getting bored. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I have to, and the back, I just say goodbye to, to the Jewish Agency of Israel, Devorah. And uh, for the first time in 2,000 years, Jews ask a Christian organization to help them with Aliyah. Aliyah is to bring Jews home. Mm-hmm. That is God's end time heart, mm-hmm. bring the Jews back home. God will reveal to them in Israel. Okay, so is. talk about what Cindy Jacobs prophesied over you about Isaiah 19. Okay, Cindy Jacobs mm-hmm. prophesied over me the first time in January 2017, the night we went to the White House. Now itself is a big miracle. Yeah. We walk around, we roam around White House, the office building, the Rose Garden, and uh, all over office and the press room everywhere. We just pray and anoint. This is before Trump came in. Anyway, that evening she prophesied over me that she said that you will do a lot of things. And uh, a big thing is about uh, increasing your relationship with Israel and uh, America. And you have to remember, I'm still a Jew citizen. Today I'm still a Jew, Jew citizen. Can you think I was thinking at that time? So she said that my reaction can only be, at least I was disciplined enough. Okay, Lord, that's what you said. I don't understand, but I work with you. So I encourage everybody, when prophets speak to you, it's a proof. How do you know it's a true prophet? The prophecy came true many times over in the past, and that's a true prophet. <laughs> you don't listen to every prophet. Right. But a prophet, so, yeah, that has been, you know, that has performed judge. well in the past. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a good prophet. So uh, Cindy Jacobs uh, had the prophecy. Then last year, uh, November at the Global Summit. There were about 62 countries, uh, prophets came, and the in front of stage. I was hiding behind. You know, she said, there was a lady from Jordan, and she said the Ruth came from Jordan. And Ruth went to, met, uh, to meet Boaz. And uh, mm-hmm. here comes King David and Jesus. So she said, I'm a descendant of Ruth from Jordan. Please don't forget us. And uh, so, Cindy Jacob said, oh, now all the Chinese came. I will pray for you. Oh, she said, we cannot do this without Chinese. Why? Because Chinese are great in numbers. And then now they have the wealth. So gospel has been preached. It has to have great help. So all the Chinese went. And I was translating in the, in the studio. I'm thinking, I guess I'm still Chinese. Although I've been here for 40 years, I'm still Chinese, right? So I guess I should go. I should obey. So I went. Uh, behind everybody, you know, thinking, okay, you Chinese, you go work. <laughs> so I was behind. Then Cindy saw me. She said, oh, Mina, come, come. So she called me up on stage. And uh, she prophesied that you can go to uh, Isaiah19ministries.org to see the film. Isaiah19ministries.org. So she prophesied to call all the Chinese to come join the mission of Isaiah 19. At that time, I was like, wow, this is a big burden. I wept for the weight, because I felt the weight, because I knew it was God's heart to bring the children of Isaac and Ishmael to worship God. That's the need of Isaiah 19. But for this to happen, in other words, the Middle East has to be preached. They had to be saved. Who's going to do that? And so it's a big thing. So, uh, but I went home. Well, I went back to the hotel that night. I prayed and said, God, so many prophecies to me about this. Do you really want me to do something? Again, this is your part now. Do you really want me to do something? God will give you a sign. So I woke up at the 
three nineteen. I look at the clock. Nineteen. Whoops. <laughs> Arc is a hint, I guess. Then I woke up again at a five nineteen. <laughs> so I couldn't get out of it. Then later we got invited to uh, to Israel by the Jewish Agency of Israel. It's a Jewish Agency is the agency that created the nation of Israel. And uh, actually, they have been looking for people to help out. And there are a lot of Christian organizations, but they still feel like, you know, wasn't wasn't right. And at that time, there was no Isaiah 19 ministries. But we went to Israel. Uh, we were trained by then. After they investigate our background, everything. We, it's me and the Mark Gonzalez. I was trained in the Aliyah project. Aliyah project is a Jews go, go back, but it's very complicated. The language, the searching, the rescue, you know, the helping, the education, everything. I, I wasn't moved until the last day I was in front of waiting wall. I'm thinking, well, Lord, I've been here for 15 days. I've been trained. I feel like for me, just one more thing to pray about. Just like if I were to tell you they are stopping children in Africa. <laughs> it's all oh, okay, I'll sign a check, but you were moved because you heard it so many times over, right? So it was like, okay, Ali, I heard, I heard many times. I knew that's what has to be done, but it didn't move me emotionally until I went to the Wailing Wall. We didn't go to any sites because we were being trained. Every day is gym packed. Wailing Wall. I asked God, well, God, what was it the day before? Before I left, you showed me a dream. And that the dream was that uh, Cindy Jacobs talked to me. I did talk to her that day, during the day. And in the dream, talked to her, she left. Then here came an angel. The angel handed a uh, really wrinkled silver paper. And on the paper, there was red writing in ancient language. Mm -hmm. And after the angel gave it to me, angel left. But was ancient, but it's in red, so I knew it was old assignment, but I didn't know what. So on that day, uh, in front of Wailing Wall, hours before we were leaving for America, I asked God, what was it on the paper? Suddenly, the red ancient writing jumped out. They came up two big Chinese words, for Chinese two words, Zhou En, for English is one word. Salvation. Salvation. You had to know, I was born again as a Lutheran, a Norwegian Lutheran. To a Lutheran, nothing's important on earth except for salvation. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand. And I was, yep. when I saw the word salvation, instantly I burst out crying. Because I knew it's God's heart. Mm. Entire Bible is about salvation. Jesus did not have to come except for the salvation of mankind. Mm -hmm. So, but this is so few talk about now in the church. Right now we're talking about getting rich. Now we're getting about get this, get that. Mm -hmm. But not for the salvation. Heaven and hell is real. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, it's real. Mm -hmm. How do you get there but for the salvation? So I knew in that moment, God's heart for the Jews to be saved. Aliyah has to take place. Same as other work, simultaneously. The w word is simultaneous salvation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have to help out with Aliyah, no choice. But also beyond that, God has a plan. I did not know the plan until I went to Egypt. When I saw those, Jew uh, those Egyptians, the Christians, today they are still suffering, but they are faithful. 2,000 years of suffering. They today still are faithful. Who are we in America? We sit in comfort and we complain. We're seeing this weather, 72 degrees, 8 degrees, 80 degrees, we think it's too hot. So people say, well, Mina, why are you working so hard? I say, well, you know, compare with them, I'm in an easy place. Therefore, I run because we all have a mandate to run your race. So what is your race? So it is my race. I understand now, it's for the salvation. So God called me and other people to then 
we started a ministry it's called the uh, Isaiah 19 Ministries. It's another miracle. Isaiah 19 Ministries has been talked about in the world 10,000 times. The world only one actually went and ahead, applied for it and got it in two weeks. It's a miracle. And just so many, I mean, God just keep connecting, you know. Uh, his work continues. God is joining the Christians in the world. Awaken, awaken your destiny. What is your destiny? What is your mission? What is your race? I would say start with what we're saying today. When the prophet speak to you, take it for serious. Mm -hmm. Write it down and ask God, what is it you want me to do? What am I willing to give up? Many are called, few are chosen. Why few are chosen? Only few are willing to pay the price. But are you the one willing to pay the price? Price is not that big. You see, I'm still alive and kicking. <laughs> <laughs> I still eat well. You know, I, I'm still here. I'm happy. It's not that. It's not that bad. Whether you like it or not, every every day goes by. We spend a day whether you work or not. So my motto is, if I don't work, the day goes by anyway. So I rather work. I do. I rather do what will last to eternity. So. That is my encouragement for you today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Great preachers, very eloquent speakers. No one can match you in what you spoke in the few minutes sitting here. I actually, I'm not sure if you, everyone would agree with that. However, you're talking to me personally, <laughs> okay? And I receive every word you're speaking. Whether I wanted it or not, it was coming in. And I thank you for that. Oh, I thank you for inviting me. <laughs> it, 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 it is an honor and, and, and a privilege to have listened to your testimony. It's, it's extraordinary. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. There's hope for you. Uh, There's hope.